Hannah, Hannah Adora Johnson, how are you? I'm very well, thank yeah, you. Yeah. How are you? We've, I've been, uh, there's a few people, you and Lance in particular, mm -hmm. are probably one of the early ones, because um, I said to him about how I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I remember messaging people and being a bit hesitant and then thinking, oh, it's, no, I won't be able to do it and people won't be up for doing it. And you, you, you pretty much bit kind of straight away, mm -hmm. which was really like, mm -hmm. it was motivating for me to get started. Because not only did you and Lance say, yeah, you were like, yeah, and we can, I'm, I'm, you, well, you almost gave me, in some sense, free reign. You didn't even know what I was going to even want to talk about. Um, but there's a few things, because obviously we met at a mental health live event, mm -hmm. which I believe is pretty much exactly a year ago now, yes, um, which is actually one of my most proudest videos I've done. I think that was one of those, uh, that's, it, that was just like a combination of things. So, so if anyone's um, listening, me and Han Hannah was, uh, who's a musician who came the night as one of the performing artists, uh, there was uh, some mental health live, you have to fill in the gaps here for me yeah. mm -hmm, cool. but it's basically um is it Ke uh, kenny yes it was basically kenny. who uh, who's uh, is he a musician or is he just uh, i know he does a lot of work you. with young people i think he does create in his own right as well i'm not too sure if he like spends time putting Some things form out of youth so much worker, but isn't it? Yeah. yeah he works with young people he does create um just an absolute all-round top guy because he so he held a night didn't he at josh joshua Brooks, joshua Brooks in manchester yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, and it was basically getting a load of musicians um, together to raise awareness about mental health, mm -hmm. raise some, some money. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was even a lady from mental health. I yeah, think it was the there. Mind Charity. Yes, that was mm -hmm. it. That was mm -hmm. it. Um, but yeah, one of my favourite videos because it was a combination of awesome people um, and the music that I use. Obviously, uh, shout out to Bobby Hanzo. Mm -hmm. uh, Every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably one of our favourite tracks. My Lizzie's mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, that was that was about about a year ago. I kind of know you as like more of a musician, mm -hmm. but for someone who says I'm the first introduction to you, how do you, how do you explain in terms of what you do? Just a human being. A human Basically, being. Basically, just a human being. Because I, I can tell <laughs> you, you do an array of things. I can tell mm -hmm. that you've also had, an, are you, when you just meet someone, you can tell that you've had uh, a, a high variation of experiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, even when, obviously, one thing I want to speak to is, uh, again, more going to about the trip you did to Ireland. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go, you go for it, because I'm, I'm now being on to <laughs> Don't worry, take the read. Um, yeah, so just a human, just going through life. I love experiencing different things, so you've picked up on that, obviously. Wherever there's something where I think I can grow or learn something or try something new, you can probably guess that I'm going to be there. Um, but yes, yeah, so mainly I am a singer-songwriter. I've been doing that for over 15 years now, since I was in very early years of high school. Um, and writing poetry and lyrics and stuff from being like six years old or something. Still got some in the pretty awful, to be honest. What, the, what poems or? Yeah, poems and lyrics and stuff. Do you, are, you, are you quite good with keeping stuff in? Because I've been really bad with like little films I made when I was, I've got some when I was a kind of a student in uni in college, mm -hmm. but I've been, I really regret not mm -hmm. cherishing certain things. Have you got a lot of that then? I do, but I think it depends really. Sometimes it's like, why do you want to keep stagnant things when you're always progressing? So it's good to sometimes clear things out to make way for new creations and inspiration to come in. Yeah. But at the same time, I've found like having these early thoughts of like, childhood adolescence in the different stages of my life sometimes I'll find things when I'm having a clear out at home and yeah. I kind of just you know curiosity will make me go through them and procrastination because then I'm not actually doing what I set out yeah, to yeah. do with the tidying and clearing yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I find it takes me back to that time but also my thought processes and my personality I can still relate to where I am at this point in my life even though like now I'm 28 years old so there's been times when I'll find something and I'm like, oh God, some of that is awful. But there might be like two sentences in it that I'm like, that's triggered a new idea for me to oh, right, okay, yeah. build something new from that with where I'm at now in my life yeah, and yeah, with yeah. like my adult brain. Adult brain. Yeah, yeah, well, no, 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 I know what you mean because I feel like I, me and um, my friend uh, Damien were talking recently about how this mm -hmm. adult brain, I think we've all got this. And there's this thing with 30 as well, when you hit, there's this, because uh, Lizzie says, when you hit 30, you'll realise you won't give a shit as much, and but for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but this adult mind thing as well is almost, are we kind of, do we actually have that, or are we kind of told mm -hmm. to say, all right, you're an adult now, you need to think. Because mm -hmm. I almost think sometimes when I make some of my best work, 
there's an essence of me being a bit of a kid mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. it, you know, like yeah. kind of no restrictions, no limitations, mm -hmm. no agenda of, uh, of concern or anything. And that sometimes is, it's like when I, um, and when you, when you were just saying then about how when you look at stuff that you've made or, or wrote when, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. uh, there's a few things. I used to draw a lot of pictures when I lived in Wales at one point. Uh, when I was about nine, I, I found recently a load of my, about 50, um, 50 pages A4 of just me drawing me and my current mates at, at school and primary in the army as if we we're in Afghanistan. Wow. And like legs blowing off and, wow. and me doing like speech bubbles going, I'm coming to get you. And I'm looking at it now thinking, whoa, like, that is, you know, it's almost like you are literally seeing how your brain worked at that point. Because yeah. um, I used to do sort of like comedy little short films. Um, would never let anyone see them because it's like, you know, like, it's like, I bet the same for a musician, you know, the stuff that you, you wrote a song when you were at 10 and you wrote a song when you were like in your 30s. Yeah. So there's a whole different um, stage to it. Absolutely. But no, I completely get, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of keeping a balance of not keeping it for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and being and sort of like, uh, sort of uh, not uh, allowing any form of regrets or anything and thinking, oh, I wish it, but it's nice to sort of cherish it, yeah. reminisce. And then go around. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's different for everyone, isn't it? Yeah. But like what you said there about the, you know, do we really have an adult brain, this and that, and what you said about your creativity. I think what I've seen, especially working with young people and kids, like whether it's in a youth work setting or a school setting, it's that actually we do learn and create the best when it's in a playful environment. Like I personally say I have Peter Pan syndrome. Right. Like I will never be a full on adult because I think. I always want to stay young at heart, but I have to pretend adult to get certain things done and you know move through life at this stage yeah. because we have to in this this reality that we're living in. Um, but yeah, I think it definitely makes life more fun and you know like you say, some of your best things do come out when you're in that carefree zone where you see like the wonders of things. And I think the more time I spend working with young people, I see that as well. Like yeah. they remind me to slow down wow, look at that, or, miss, you write so much, you should draw more pictures in your workbook, and I'm like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, ki kids are, um, when I used to teach a, a little bit at UTC, we used to do, like, um, like uh, film workshops, mm -hmm. and kids remind you of just the, the more, uh, having a more simplistic way of looking at things, and mm -hmm. they almost inadvertently kind of make you realise that you overthink stuff, um, and I kind of, like, I, I sometimes catch myself, like, looking around and envy, being envious of just that free state of mind, if you know what I mean, and just, because I think the older you get, not to be all sort of doom and gloomy, but it's kind of like in today's world, and I know every generation will say that, oh, you didn't know, but I think it's kind of like, it's harder and harder to sort of um, keep yourself uh, in balance, but with check of how you're trying to not keep, go down like a bit of a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Simplicity is key for me, I think. I notice the times when I start to overcomplicate things or I'm in my mind so much that I'm not in the present moment that that's when things get more grey and I cause more stress for myself that doesn't need to be there. Like, sounds cliche, but as you know yourself, the only moment that exists is the one that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's where that childlike wonder lives and where the simplicity lives of just enjoying that part of that day yeah, without yeah. you know the complications of yesterday or the worries of like what's going to happen tomorrow like for me personally and you know it's a trap that sometimes we fall into because society is so fast-paced but I think the more that we can slow down and remember that yeah, yeah it does yeah. make things there's a program that we've been watching recently um, you know the 24 hours in A&E and we were watching it last night I was saying to Liz this should be shown in school because it mm -hmm. really does give people a reality check mm -hmm. because when you're saying that it's there's there was a guy on it last night when we were watching it and it is literally, you should be living every day to its full. Mm -hmm. um, not because you should be uh, a pessimist and thinking, oh, right, well, eventually I'm going to get sick or eventually something like this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just understanding that you have no idea of when, because it's not even your own factor, is it, of what you do mm -hmm. to yourself. It's yeah. the world around you has, has its own contribution of mm -hmm. how your life is and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, going back to mental health, it's, do you find that... I find it hard to I find it hard to talk about my own mm -hmm. in, the, in the last year or so in times that I really want to because I feel certain words have been so overused mm -hmm. it's kind of like lost it's um, 
sort of potency, if you will. And the thing is, it annoys me as well. People talk as if mental health is certain people that have depression or anxiety or whatever. It, and, I, and I think, no, we've all got, fuck it, we've all got mental health. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's somehow, I don't know if it's society or if it's the media or education, mm -hmm. it's making us feel like it's certain people, oh, you've got a mental health. Mm -hmm. There's still a stigma there, isn't there? Yeah. And it's kind of like, do you, have you seen that as well? Or have you seen the transition even? <coughs> yeah, I think I've seen it being talked about a lot more. Yes. which is nice, especially within male groups. Um, I know some of my close friends do run like male circles where people can go and share and you've got that brotherhood feeling that they might not have with their existing friend groups because everything's about going to the pub or, you know, what are you saying that for? You yeah. wussy, like, things like that. I've seen a massive shift with that. Um, I mean, I can only talk from my own experience and I do do holistic therapies as well where I do see, obviously, other people's journeys with their mental health as a therapist side um, and I do feel like it's good that it's being talked about more but like you say it's also a case of is it being talked about that much that now it's in our faces every day and we're focusing more on where our mental health is in a negative light I mean that's, well, that's just why one I think that's why I think it's, it's seen as a negative thing it's like oh you've got it's almost like saying oh you've got a mental health mm -hmm. issue and that's what it's recently it's annoyed me because I've even had some people come at me saying, oh, look, I know this, you know, this might have happened because you meant, and it's like, in my head I'm thinking, dude, we've all got mental health. Mm -hmm. It's just that the people almost that are, um, say, struggling are mm -hmm. ones that are just kind of are being a bit more vocal about it. Mm -hmm. But that's why I'm saying it's like a double-edged sword because I've, 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 I've been at times in social gatherings where I mm -hmm. want to say a bit more and say certain mm -hmm. things, but I feel, even when I talk about me and the things that I may, I'm mm -hmm. because I've, I've never really been, well, I have and haven't so been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like, because oh, it's just been so overplayed yeah. and it's like the words almost like depression, anxiety, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're kind of very diluted now. I think maybe that's because of how common it is in the world that we live in as maybe, well, to be yeah. honest. Um, but like you say, it depends on the person as well. But I do feel that <clears throat> with most things, like, I mean, if you believe in the law of attraction or you've come across that before, it's like the more you focus on something and you get stuck in the story of that, you're living that out more so and it's getting deeper ingrained into your everyday life. Mm. Whereas if you could find the balance between acceptance of, okay, this is how I feel, this is what's happening for me, but then wanting to create a better reality for yourself and being like, I want to heal from this or I can still find ways daily to pick myself up because unfortunately that's the, the curse within mental health. It's, it's not a true thought, it's like a bully in your head, isn't it? So sometimes it's so hard to find that energy and I really do sympathise with people going through these conditions and I've been there myself. There's still days when I have grey days as well and sometimes it's not as easy as reminding yourself, oh, if I do a meditation for 20 minutes or if I go and eat some nice fresh food, it's going to help boost my energy, mm. which is going to make my mind feel a lot clearer and happier. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you're actually in the thick of it, it's so easy to kind of go, it's like a spiral for me, the way I vision it is like you going down and down by complaining, feeling hopeless, or that you don't have the power to make yourself feel any other way. Yeah, yeah, and I think that totally depends on the person and the support system that they have around themselves. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I think there's a variation. I know there's the whole nature nurture thing that can be brought into mental health as well. Mm -hmm. That's something as well. I don't know how I'd do it, but I want to, I'm just a very curious kind of person in itself, even towards myself. And I feel like I'd like to try and find out about my state of mind, certain mm -hmm. areas of my life that I'm happy mm -hmm. and not happy with, is it nature or nurture? Mm -hmm. And one might go, what, what's the point of knowing? And, and for me, it just it's very, uh, it's just innate to, uh, to sort of just want to know, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of, I feel knowing that. I, I've, I've always been like that in any situation, I just have to know because it's yeah, almost like my too. sense of closure, you know, it's how I can just mm -hmm. sort of, even if it's good or bad, mm -hmm. I'm the rip the the band-aid off um, kind of guy. Definitely, I think the, the most important thing to keep in mind with that as well for anyone is not to attach that to your identity. Not to right. say like, I I am anxiety or you know I am depression because it can feel that way when we're so deep in that feeling. Yeah. I think the main thing is to remember that you are separate from that. Yeah. If you can kind of get into your mind to be an observer of it, which, you know, it does take time. It's not like an instant thing, but day to day, if you can kind of try and step back and see yourself still as an amazing person that the mental health issue is going to try and make you think that you're not, 
you can kind of see as an outside perspective and I think that's also why it's so important to have people around you who remind you of how awesome you are and who are aware of your feelings and don't want to add to the stress mm -hmm. of what you're going through. Um, I know for me personally that was my approach, I had to take a step back and remind myself of you know the amazing things that I have done, like I'm a good person, I don't have bad intentions with other people and I've not killed anyone, I've not done this and that and just remind myself that actually I can remind myself this when I'm feeling so low mm -hmm. and kind of pull myself back up into who I truly am rather than what this thing's trying to make me believe I am. Yeah, I think there's this weird thing I've, I've experienced recently where, um, it, it, where I want to do something, but for some reason it's that, um, like mentally I do, and this is what I was trying to explain to Lizzie the other night. Mm -hmm. So for example, I want to start up, um, like I want to either go start jujitsu again or yeah. start boxing. Nice. And it's, I want to do it. It's not like, and, I, and anyone that knows me, if I want to do something, I'll, I'll do it. I'm very, very kind of go get it like that. But for some reason, I've just still not brought myself to make myself go down. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I'm trying to work out why, why mm -hmm. I'm doing that. Because it's, it's almost like a puzzle, which, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's, I've got the motivation here. And then I'm trying to, and then, and then you get lost in this sort of uh, battle in your head of, well, is that just something else? Is that kind of something mm -hmm. to do with like an anxiety or, or mm -hmm. what? Um, and it's, it's frustrating, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Not to sort of, mm -hmm. to, to know. Because totally. then obviously without knowing you can't, how, how am I going to? And I, I experienced that myself, especially with physical things like you say. I mean, I love boxing as well and getting into the gym and certain forms of exercise. And for me, I always find whether it's that or it's, doing things that I need to do to make my business grow more or you know those things that we know if we do it we're going to progress forward but for some reason yes, yes. there's so much resistance there and I think a lot of that for me falls down into self-sabotage and knowing that we can make that leap but that resistance is there because it's something worth pushing through. But we do we self-sabotage because it's to help justify if we fail? Possibly. It could be a fear of failure. It could be a fear of I'm not good enough. I mean, for me, what I've learned as a therapist, um, which you know might be a bit much for people to comprehend, but some people might relate to this. It's early on in childhood, like there's a point where you feel the lack of love. You feel something where either you've seen two people arguing and fighting or someone's been aggressive or even spoke just negatively to you to the point where you feel a little bit like scared or traumatised. It doesn't right. have to be like a great scale. It could be something that was quite small, but for that child, it rocked their belief system. And, locks and from it. there, rather than seeing through our own eyes of how the world is to us, we start looking to parents, teachers, other figures around us to be told how the world is and how we're supposed to behave and what makes us a good boy or a good girl. And from there, you start creating your belief system. So mm. if you're brought up in a place where you're constantly being told you're not good enough or you can't do anything right, let me do it, money doesn't grow on trees, all these different things about <clears throat> anything and everything then builds up this picture in our heads of our conditioning so that when we get to certain points at our age now, we don't realise it's there because it's in the subconscious, mm -hmm. but it's that belief system. I can't do that because I'm not good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like even me as a performer, I've performed for 15 years and I still have this thing where every now and again it pops up like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not confident enough. Or like, what if people laugh at me? What if I fail? And it is literally just this perception that we've took on from other people through fear. It's yeah, other yeah. people's fear or pain being put onto us that we can, if we're aware of it and we want to be aware of it and change our lives, then it's... It's not comfortable, it's not a nice process because it means you've got to face your own shit, basically, and really question things without feeling sad about the upbringing that you had or certain experiences in your life. Like You've got to be able to kind of see it as an observer. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've experienced well, myself. I've been on, um, so to put it bluntly, I've actually been on the waiting list mm -hmm. to, um, I did the first point of therapy, which was um, counselling. Mm -hmm. Did four sessions, and on the fourth one, she said, um, "This is when I lived in the, in, um, in the Manchester City Centre." She mm -hmm. goes, uh, "Josh, if I'm being honest with you, you're going to need to. You're not. This is not uh, the right thing. You need to see okay. almost like. Um, so, yeah, forgive my analysis. So, it's be a counsellor. I'm trying to think what would be the one above. 
Um, would it be a, would it be a psychiatrist? Psych- I was going to say, would it be a psychiatrist? That seemed good. But she basically said, like, this is not for me. You're, okay. you're, you're almost the next level. Okay. Um, she says, go to see the, uh, the desk. And that took me about a year to get that. Mm-hmm. She was lovely, but she was a bit, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, Hannah. She was a bit like, she was a bit too, okay, how does that make mm-hmm. you feel? And then when I get that, I'm, I'm, I'm then disconnected. Yeah, me too. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. feel like, oh, I'm in this room, I'm thinking, right, 45 mm-hmm. minutes now, because mm-hmm. I feel like it's too, it's um, not force, but it's just mm-hmm. too acting a certain way. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, did, yeah. I don't know, it just felt like a, but I did, that took a year to get that. I did four, mm-hmm. she says, and one, one each week. So a month later, she goes, I'll take you to the, go to the, um, the reception, and we'll get you to see a psychiatrist, and mm-hmm. it, could, it could be a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Two years later, two and a half years later, that was. Because I've lived here two years, and it was mm-hmm. just about six months before I moved from, um, I live in the Chips building in Great Ancoats, so mm-hmm. you know. mm-hmm. but um, yeah, Springfield Centre, and it's two and a half years, mm-hmm. and I'm almost got to the point now where I just feel, oh, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just, I'll work ways of doing it myself. Yeah, that was the approach I had, a similar experience actually, and I think there's, obviously there's pressure on the NHS and certain yeah. services that we can have without having the income to go private healthcare kind yeah. of routes. Um, but yeah, I've experienced that with the waiting list and you know, I know of cases where it's very, very upsetting that certain young people or even adults, yeah. due to that lack of support <clears throat> and having to wait for so long that things have reached a severe point and they've actually ended their life. And you know, that's heartbreaking that that's happening yeah because um, I, I feel like so there's there's going to be so many different cases but there's mm-hmm. just do you know what it's mad i, I did a, a couple of sessions with a um a, a therapist in, mm-hmm. I, in ireland a friend of my mum's <coughs> and it really helped i only did one because obviously it was when i was visiting mum was going through a bit of a this was before lizzie this is i think i was going through a bit of a shit breakup and some other history stuff but it is mad how you do f- it's a sense of cleansing even mm-hmm. if you go in and you think ah oh, it's a load of crap or anything mm-hmm. For someone, because they don't, they kind of, the whole point of it, and what I got anyway, is to, is to ask you questions, but mm-hmm. kind of throw that question out, and then you almost asking yourself. Yeah. So you, and, the, and then, you, and the, the, what he did, because I, I can sometimes get tongue tied, and I can, my, like, I can get a bit like, mm-hmm. but he was asking me questions at a tone and a pace that just made me feel um, at ease. And he just, and it, I don't know, I, I, the one thing that really resonated with me on that, that session, that one session I had with him was just how he kind of built the, the narrative yeah. and then said some certain things. Yeah, if, he was if, just if, guiding you, wasn't he? will, yeah, yeah. See, I've found that myself that whether it's a therapist or it's like a friend or even a stranger, the most valuable thing you can give to someone is your complete attention. So by that I mean, well, I like to call it holding space. So I imagine that we're in a container now My thoughts are not about, oh God, that happened yesterday, I had this argument, or what do I need to buy for food later, or anything like this. I'm literally just a a clear vessel for you to Mm. use as a soundboard. And on a deeper level, what that's doing, what you've just described with this therapist, is it's actually making a container where I'm focusing my energy at you, therefore your energy is able to expand, which then allows you to dive into your inner knowing to bring up yeah, your truth. Yeah, that's literally what happened. Exactly. Yeah. So that you don't feel like you're questioning what you're saying or you're not sharing your yeah. heart and soul to someone and you can see that this person, whether it's professional or someone who's supposed to be a support friend to you, mm. is actually totally somewhere else and you feel like, well, this is why I don't bother opening up because yeah. what's the point? And I think that's the shame when some people have one bad experience mm-hmm. and then that's why they... Because I'm out of saying, like, like me and my, I've got four, uh, three brothers I'm definitely the only one that's that would that you you know how like me and you are in terms of speak up quite openly and we uh, are quite spiritual and mm-hmm. um, they're quite sort of uh, more old school mm-hmm. as in like more just sort of like yeah, hold it together and stuff, yeah, yeah 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 so it's it's been interesting that's why it's kind of like I've been talking to a lot of friends me and Lance have obviously uh, resonated in, in ways because Lance every time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I love that <laughs> but he'll uh, but yeah just because we've we've been through certain shit growing up mm-hmm. so even though and but like I mean that that man is just a, a saint really yeah, but he he, he he basically we kind of resonate in ways because we've even though it's different storylines mm-hmm. how we felt and how and the repercussion of those feelings are kind of similar and mm-hmm. um, so that's why I've always you know it's, it's been nice to say I've certainly a friend like that yeah definitely. to talk these things through it was really good as well like I, I, there are i do feel like it is becoming more of a 
talked about thing mm -hmm. as long as it's but then I know at the same time more some media and stuff is that mm -hmm. it's kind of like oh fucking hell mental health mm -hmm. just get on with it you know mm -hmm. what I mean and then there's the you know and I, I think there's like a happy medium because I do think there's a lot of people uh, crying out mm -hmm. when it might just take something as little as mm -hmm. just taking a day just to sort of self-reflect you know a lot yeah. of the basic techniques I bet that you would even almost sort of recommend to someone mm -hmm. Self-care should always be a priority. And you know that's not always bubble baths and meditation. Sometimes it's not getting dressed all day because actually I need to let my body and mind just do nothing today. Yeah. You know, anything that you feel will help you. Your inner being knows, you know, that <laughs> something inside you knows what you need to do. But as we see in certain articles and stuff, like the challenge is to stop the mind because the mind is only what we already know. It is the pain, it is the uncomfortableness, it is dealing with the anxiety, the depression and everything. So that's gonna give us an answer based on those things. Mm. Whereas if we can stop that and just chill for 10 minutes, put some chilled out music on, don't have to have lyrics or anything, do you know what I mean? Or just sit in silence and just allow yourself to relax. You'd be amazed at the shift that you can have to then make a more kind of not educated, but more of a true decision or a new thought pattern. Yeah. Um, well, but what you're saying is almost a very fundamental, basic technique. Mm -hmm. When I, I meaning it's 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 solely right, as in I completely agree. But it's mad how many people just don't think of that because mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying there'll probably be there'll be so many people out there that have some form of suffering, but by just literally spending a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. That's why I think yoga's got huge. Yeah, it's why massively. Reiki's got bigger yeah, and, big. you know, um, and, and uh, meditate, meditation. Yeah. I think all these things, they are growing because obviously mm -hmm. people like yourself are mm -hmm. promoting these tools yeah. that people can do, but it's yeah. crazy how many people just don't do it. And it's I'll something they can do in their pajamas in the living room. Exactly, I'll be honest, one thing that I don't, I don't blame it because it's anything can be used for good or bad in my eyes. But one thing that I think has had a massive impact on this and the, the way that we're living so fast paced and our brains trying to keep up with that and the body can't keep up with that because we need a certain balance. I blame it on things like technology and social media mm -hmm. because you'll find the minute, some people from the minute they wake up or you know they've got five, ten minutes as a little break from whatever they're doing, First thing that we do, I'm guilty of it as well, you know, we pull out our phone, we scroll, we see what other people are doing, then we've got judgments in our head. It's projections of other people's opinions and their life. If mm -hmm. you think of everything as energy, depending on what your beliefs are, then every single status, every single photo, article, anything, music that we listen to, the radio station, the TV, the news, everything is a waveform of energy that is coming at us in our energy. And that's why it's so important to take that break, you know, go for a walk without your phone or anything and just reconnect to things. And it sounds proper hippified, but no, that's the simplicity of it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. allowing your brain to have a break. Like if you was constantly working on your computer editing all day and you, you put in this download on it and this download, which is what we're doing constantly every day. We're downloading information with our eyes, our ears, our noses, touching things, constantly taking things in with all the senses. Mm. Obviously, you're going to reach a point where your computer goes, Ugh, yeah. shut down, need to restart, reboot. And that's what, for me, a lot of mental health issues are in yeah, a metaphorical yeah. way. It's turn it off, <laughs> off and on, but yeah, you know, yeah, leave yeah. a little gap for it to actually reset and do what it's doing. And I, I do feel that social media and technolo technology things are massively adding to that because we don't stop, you know. It is, I'm guilty of it. I loved that the only other day I, 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 I realised uh, me and Loki went to get a coffee, I parked my car, <coughs> went in to get a coffee, and then I knew I was going to walk him after. But I thought, oh, I didn't get my, I haven't got my phone, I haven't got my phone, I haven't got my phone. And it was not, it was more so not for calls or messages or work mm -hmm. or anything. It was just like, oh, play music or, mm -hmm. and I actually, and then, you know, and I need to do this more often. I went, no, I shouldn't, you know, I mean, granted, it might be in the car, so it might be dangerous, someone might have it. But I thought, yeah. really, the reality is, me having a coffee with him, chilling. Mm -hmm. And that, that was it, I was in the cafe and I was thinking, oh, what am I gonna do here? What am I mm -hmm. gonna do here, no phone? Overtaking that kind of, oh my God, I've got mm -hmm. nothing to watch or do or yeah. listen to. Um, and we had a, a lovely walk and, and I wanna do more of that because mm -hmm. I'm a little, and the only thing that's hard with my job is mm -hmm. that social media is heavily incorporated. Same, same. So it's, do you know what I mean? So but I think there's still ways around that, you know, for other people that are creatives as well as us, like there's a way 
if you can teach yourself how to like organize things differently you can say to yourself right do you know what like my personal thing is i'm not going to look at my phone for the first hour or two hours that i wake up i'm going to let my brain naturally take in this new day i'm going to think about all the things that I'm grateful for because mm -hmm. attitude of gratitude is one of the best ways to boost your whole mood and the things that are flowing into your life as well. Um, and then little things like that, maybe I'll have an hour at this time and I'll smash it in that hour, which helps with your procrastination because you're not constantly on, off, on, off being distracted and then ending up scrolling and things. It's like, right, I've got one hour, I need to smash it within yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah. And everything that I come across at this point in my life, it's just reprogramming. It's just learning a new way that works better for us rather than what we're seeing around us that's so easy to fall into as habits or that's just the way that people do things these days, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. Mm. Can we just hold it there? I'm dying for it. I'm, it's again. Did I do this with you? I, need I a could wee. use a wee as well. You go yeah. first, darling. Sure, on. where yeah, is yeah, yeah. it? Uh, I'll tell you what, passes. <laughs> yeah. Because me, we're not into that, are we, Shane? We're <laughs> <laughs> not, but... There you go, you can, you can click that. Thank you. Um, I try not to drop it in the toilet. For the record, I'm not. I'll show you that. No R. Kelly's in this room, right? <laughs> yeah. are, we, are we going again? <clears throat> cool. Am I okay where I'm sat? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So, yeah, one thing I remember mm. you telling me a while back, I wanted to talk about that trip to Ireland. Whereabouts was mm. it again? Well, the whole thing was interesting. So, basically, it's a place called Loch Derg, which is in, it's like near to, not so far from County Donegal. Um, and basically I stumbled on this place by accident a few years ago. I was driving over there and having a bit of a road trip. And in Donegal, yeah. In Donegal, yeah. Beautiful place, like definitely go if you've not been. Um, well, just so you know, I, didn't, I, I lived in Southern Ireland for ah, okay. nine years. So you've been there? So I lived in Roscommon. I was there. Um, yeah. And I lived in Athlone and Sligo. Nice. And then I lived in Dublin before I moved back to England. Beautiful. So I've got You've lived the dream, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's my future plan. Well, I, 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 I appreciate it now, mm -hmm. but I was there when I was a kid, okay, uh, when I was yeah. um, just before my GCSEs. Mm -hmm. My mum bought a little place, uh, it's like a couple of horses, 10 mm -hmm. acres of land. So we lived like in a beautiful place, mm -hmm. but I was just a kid that wanted to do film and photography and mm -hmm. do stuff. And it was, my mate was like seven miles that way and the yeah. cinema was 12 miles yeah. that way. And so it was, yeah. it was, now I love it. Yeah, I think if you didn't have a vehicle, it'd be very yeah, difficult yeah, to yeah, enjoy but, it. But sorry, go on, you're done again. No, you're fine. Yeah, so um, long story short, because it is a long-winded one. So. I stumbled upon this place by accident, Loch Derg, about three years ago, maybe more now. Um, and you know, you see like the brown tourist signs and you think, oh, what's that? Should we have a bit of that? Yeah, okay, let's follow the white rabbit down this hole. And there we ended up. Right. Um, and there was basically like a boathouse and this statue and there was like a beautiful plaque next to the statue that always stayed with me. That was basically saying something along the lines of, like apologizing to God, like, or, you know, whatever you believe in, like, for me, I just believe in something bigger than myself. Um, and it was basically saying, like, sorry for what we've done mm -hmm. to your children. We know that this wasn't your intention, you know, because a lot of people blame the power above us for the suffering in the world and stuff. And that, to me, resonated, like, actually, a lot of problems in the world are man-created, but that's another story. But, yeah, we blame that. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so I really felt that. And along with this... Sorry, I'm hitting the microphone. Mm -hmm. So I really felt that in my heart. But along with that, it was the most picturesque place that I've ever seen in my life, like this. Sorry, that's sorry, me. Is that that's me or you? Me. Oh, sorry. sorry. I thought it was my sister. sister. Um, yeah, it was... Are we going to cut this bit out? Should I start again? <laughs> no, you go back. <laughs> no, I thought it's, I've, I've done it. I'm guilty. We're all going to Yeah, so it was also the most picturesque place I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's like this massive lake. Um, and then in the distance, mm -hmm. there was this little island of buildings. But it was the way that the sky reflected in the water, all these blues and purples. And you couldn't see where the water ended and the sky started. Oh, right, okay. So it was quite trippy in a way. And I was just like looking around as a girl from Manchester. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, and it just always stayed in my heart and I kept researching this place and I found out it's to do with the St. Patrick's pilgrimage. Didn't have a clue what that was. Didn't really know much about St. Patrick. And I found over the last few years, like bit by bit, I've ended up researching it again and learning more. Um, to the point where this year I felt it so strongly that like I just need to go there. Um, I know some people... To the same place in Donegal? Yeah, to there. Um, and actually go back to 
Loch Dirk and actually see what it was because it was late at night when I, I ended up there. It was like dusk. Um, oh, right. So you haven't seen it once in the daytime at all yet? No, oh, right. I hadn't then, no. So everything was closed by that time. There was no one to speak to and say, what is this place? What do you do here? But I knew it was something. Um, anyways, fast forward to this year in August, I finally decided I'm going to go there. Um, ended up flying to the total wrong airport in Ireland that was... <laughs> Five hours away from where I where needed did you fly to be. To I flew to Shannon. Oh, that's because where I would fly to, or Dublin. Yeah, Shannon. Yeah, so it's just a tiny, tiny airport. That's like one exactly. plane a day almost. Yeah, and also there's a county. Well, there's a Don. No, sorry. There's a Loch Derg actually near Shannon, but it's just a river. Right. It's not the place that I needed to go to. So I turned it into a bit of a road trip. I went through Galway, and Were then you on your own now. On my own. Yeah. So this was a. Total so that takes balls in itself, right? just to sort of go and do. I mean, I know it's only Ireland, mm -hmm. but it's more of the the mental capacity of thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do something. I'm mm -hmm. like, so did you do that purposely on your own then? Purposely on my own, but it was supposed to be a lot more smooth and like less hassle. So I was thinking I'll either get the ferry and take my car or I'll hire a car out there and just drive straight there. Once I realised I'd booked the wrong airport. And then it was like the prices that were coming through on the ferries and the car hire was like, looks like I've got to do this the proper old school way and, you know, get the the buses, the coaches and everything that are like one bus a day. And you can't go straight there. You've got to stop off in Galway. So that's what I had to do. Um, and then eventually I've got on this next part of the journey to actually reach Loch Derg after a few days within Galway. Um, Galway's beautiful. Oh, that's like Studentville, place. that's like the student central in Ireland. People mm -hmm. think it's actually Dublin, but Galway's, it's just either full of uh, Chinese tourists taking pictures True. or just students, but True. it's so beautiful. I, I was actually there when it was Results Day as well, so well, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah lots of time. young people throwing up in the street. Right. <laughs> it was a bit nuts. Um, so yeah, it was quite um, quite a shock to the system to go from being in Galway, like you say, with all that culture and so much lively atmosphere and nightlife and just tourists and stuff, to then go right out into the sticks, into Loch Derg. And I found out when I got there, it was actually a Catholic pilgrimage. Right. I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was just like a retreat because the website says, you know, we welcome people of all faiths. Everyone can come here and experience the peace of this island. Because what it is basically, you get a boat from the place where I had found by accident years ago, and there's a little dock bit there. Right. You get on this little ferry that takes you across to the island, which is only like 10, 15 minutes to get across. And then all that's on the island is the uh, basilica, like the big church, right. the dormitories where you stay, a gift shop, and the place where you eat. That is all that is there, and you're surrounded by this huge lake, so. No Nando's. Nothing, and you're not allowed your phone, no technology, no. What happened to your phone? Your phone, <laughs> didn't, you, didn't you phone, you dropped your phone yeah, on. Yeah, so it was interesting, basically. As I was just about to get on the boat to go across to the island, my phone jumped out my hand and smashed into three pieces. Never happened with an iPhone before. Yeah, you get a cracked screen, but this actually the front separated with the back and there was just the middle computer oh, bit and it was right. like, that's not working ever again. No, that's so um, anyway, I wasn't planning to use a phone on the island, but that was like, there wasn't even temptation there anymore. And that's then, almost fade, you know. Surely yeah. you see that, especially you. Massively. Being, that's like Massi well. It's we'll annoying. lead on to what happened right, okay. after that. Kind of links in with that as well. So I've gone onto the island and realised like we have to spend the majority of the time there saying station prayers, which is a, a Catholic tradition. I didn't even know how to use rosaries, which I was calling rosemary beads. Because obviously I love my herbs that's and that, stuff, yeah. you know, I was like, <laughs> that okay. That sounds something like I do. Yeah. So what's the rose, rosemary? Rosary. Rosary is the beads. Yeah, rosemary. rosemary. <laughs> it's something you put in your food. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, kind like of, a herb, yeah, herb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was hilarious. And I've had to ask this old Irish man to teach me how to recite the rosaries. And that kind of blew my mind because it was so new to me. I mean, I didn't grow up with religion. I wasn't christened, wasn't like really told much about God. I just found my own path with my own beliefs, like the older that I got. Um, so it was a massive shock to the system, along with the fact that you had to start fasting midnight the day before you actually arrived on the island. So along with all that traveling, not eating, didn't really sleep the night before, and then you're only allowed one meal each day within the space of an hour, and you can have coffee and dry bread and oat cakes. 
that's it. What's the point of that? As in, like, what's so what so for their mm-hmm. point? What is it in terms humble. of humble to humble you to be to gracious, make you for grateful it. Right. that there's people that don't have any food. So it's like you literally strip to basics. The minute that you step on the island, you go to your dorm, you put your stuff away, you take off your shoes and your socks, and no matter where you are, whether you're inside or outside in the the rain, the snow, anything, no shoes and socks, no snacks, no phone, no music, nothing. Everything is just what's happening there and then on the island so basically the first night you also do a 24-hour vigil which is where you don't sleep you stay awake and all through the night you're reciting these prayers over and over and over with everyone in the basilica like the church out loud Mm -hmm. Um. or you can say it to yourself or you can say it out loud there's someone who's saying it on a microphone so that you can keep up with it at their pace and stuff but that in itself is very testing because you're constantly kneeling to pray and then you're up walking to pray, kneeling. So you can imagine doing that all through the night up until dawn, like maybe 5.30 a.m. Your knees are in bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're cold, like it's freezing, there's no heat in it. It's just a massive church, like everything's stone. You know, like it's literally, apparently the hardest pilgrim that you can do in the world. How Never many days Europe. It? it was, I arrived Friday morning and I left on Sunday morning. But then so you carry short. on the fast until midnight the next day after right. you've left. Um, so yeah, basically it just gave me so many shifts. I was so grateful for everything, like even the minute that you're leaving and you put your socks back on, like, oh my God, I've got socks, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The minute that you can eat normal food, you're like, oh my God, the tastes, the flavors, like everything is a massive, massive thing for you. Like so grateful for everything. But it was more so the people that you meet and things like that and the connections that you make because you've got no distraction. You can go and have like peaceful time on your own, but you find like everyone is so warm and welcoming there because you're all in it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact of how difficult it is, you will push through so many things in yourself. Like I found during the vigil, I was so full of rage. I was so angry. I was like, I don't understand why I'm doing this. I don't. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't know to expect this at all, like, it's hard, like, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. Was it quite um, stern in the sense that, like, they were sort of guiding you constantly through it, or was it you almost had to work stuff out for yourself? It's more, like, you have this set thing, like, these are the prayers, your Hail Marys, Our Fathers, and then the Creed, for anyone who understands, like, the Catholic religion or has been brought up with that, um, might kind of get what I'm saying about that. Um, but your own personal experience is obviously always going to be different from the person next to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it was just, it felt like because of the nature of it as well, you're praying, 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 it brought up things that needed to be purged, which was the anger, right. was the frustration, was the, hm, don't want to do that. Right. You know, the, the resistance in myself, I felt like in reflection, that's what that was. And then having to go to mass straight after doing that vigil, and seeing everyone else who did it the night before you is had a nice rest. And they're all like bushy-eyed and bushy-eyed, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed is the phrase, isn't it? They're all feeling great. And you're literally sat in mass having to listen to someone go through a service. And you're just like falling asleep. And you're not allowed to go to sleep. You're not allowed to go and get in bed. You have to then carry on that next day up oh, until okay. bedtime. Knowing that you're only going to eat bread and oat cakes within an hour. <laughs> You know, it's Could it you was do very it, testing. Shane? Could you do it now? It was very testing, but because I didn't know what to expect, I had no choice. I was stuck on the island, wasn't going to swim through that lake. There could have been all sorts yeah, in there, yeah, you know. Yeah. Also, you do feel a sense of, right, you're here, yeah. get on with it, because it's on an island. Total different world. You go, it's like, because it's such an ancient place as well, like, it's apparently where the cave was, where St. Patrick went, and that's the nature of the whole retreat, or the pilgrimage, is that St. Patrick went into the cave for... I can't remember if it was 48 hours or something, so excuse me on that, I don't have the exact facts. But he went into this cave and had the most simple of things and a really difficult kind of personal experience being there in the cold and without his basic kind of needs. Mm. That's when he had a lot of realisations and it was from there he got the guidance to lead the Irish people away from, I can't remember if it was the Church of England or something that was existing that they were currently following that people weren't obviously enjoying or happy about it wasn't justice for them so that's how that movement came about where he then led them to a new way of being and belief wise um so it's kind of reflecting that everything that happens is done for a reason 
Um, but the beauty of it was, I think, what really made me have shifts was I've had this thing in my head personally about religion from being young because I wasn't brought up in it. And I see a lot in the way the world is even today that religion is separating people. It's creating a lot of wars and deaths and extreme beliefs. And I actually went to speak to a counsellor on the island because, you know, it is difficult and things do come up for you, especially if you want to go to um, confession, which I'd never done before. And I found myself like, I just wanted to throw myself into it, brought a lot of things up emotionally. So I was told that we do have this support here. And that to me, obviously what we spoke about before, due to waiting lists in the UK and normal life. Something around here for two you know minutes. I mean? anyway, yeah. Go and see the counsellor. No one else was making use of it. I went and sat with that woman for two hours. Right. And she literally did not judge me. She sat with me. She appreciated everything. I told her how it was difficult for me to be there because this is challenging my belief system. I'm seeing so many people who are Catholic and this has been drilled into them. And now I'm thinking, I like this. Like, I might go and be Catholic when I go home. But then at the same time, there's this thing in me that's like, this is brainwashing, I don't want to be here, like, because of the fear in me, like, I never believed in God and now you want me to talk to God. And yeah, it's a bit of an overwhelming sense it was, of um, yeah, yeah, a massive, massive shake in what was happening in my head and my heart. And she said one of the most powerful things to me, she was like, does it matter? She said, does it matter what stamps on it or, you know, the exact things that we're following here? She said, the main thing is you find your own language with it and what works for you. And that's way more welcoming than say a Jehovah's going, mm -hmm. yo, we're gonna we're gonna burn, you're gonna burn if you don't, you know. Exactly. So it's it's yeah, because we're all I mean, I certainly am, but mm -hmm. as humans we're all quite reluctant to that mm -hmm. forceful nature, aren't we? Yeah. So I think that's why a lot of people the people that aren't religious have almost like a bad um, interpretation of it because they feel that it's just like this sort of brainwashing, yeah. forceful nature. But yeah. it's not the case. That is, that would be the perfect person to introduce me to a religion would be exactly. that whole Exactly. That, that doesn't matter right now, I just want to talk and you know, that mm -hmm. would make me kind of go, you know. Uh -huh. And the fact that she also embraced my other beliefs like on the holistic side of things and you know, what I do. Like she actually was into meditation and everything herself. She showed me that a religious person doesn't have to be like what you create in your head of this is right, this is wrong, that's sinful. It was like, no, just you can embrace right. life, like life's happening all around you, enjoy yeah. it for what it is. And whatever you want to follow works for you, like you're still welcome here. Yeah, and yeah. I just thought that was beautiful. And that shifted so much of the fear I was feeling there. It made me realise that as long as I'm feeling good in my heart and in my mind, nothing else really matters, do you know what I mean? So with the, so with, with the actual uh, pilgrimage, mm -hmm. do you, where is it? Is it kind of advertised somewhere? Is it more of like word by mouth? It's more word by mouth. It's a massive tradition, especially for Riley. Irish Catholic people so I was just saying um, not too long ago that it's kind of your, your granny would have gone her granny great granny on and on so it's and like it's, a tradition sort of thing yeah well. it's kind of like the idea of Mecca for Muslims obviously different in a lot of ways but that kind of thing where it's a responsibility that you'll go there and you'll do that for your family and the idea is when you go there, you also pray for your loved ones, anyone who's in bad health or right. who has a test coming up or different kind of scenarios. Um, so it's also a very selfless thing as well. You're going for your own uh, kind of spiritual quest, but you're also giving back a lot of love and good thoughts to the people that you care about. Um, so yeah, it's one of them things where everyone there, like some people are like, oh, don't know why I've come here again like they feel this duty that they just have to whereas some people they will go every year without fail or every weekend for that season because it's only on in like the, the summer seasons because obviously the colder seasons you it wouldn't be nice for you to be barefoot around there it was cold enough as it was you yeah, know yeah, and when yeah. it's wet like the the stations certain places outside that you do say the prayers can be very slippy yeah, um, yeah. so you're at risk of kind of and i remember in off. um in ireland that the the weather varies so much obviously mm -hmm. hence being a, a smaller island but i mm -hmm. definitely remember that when i was over there that, that um i don't know which i'd take you know wet manchester or because I honestly like some you could I, I remember when I used to live in Dublin mm -hmm. and there would be points where it would be really really like pissing down cold and then the next day it could be really really hot but not like when it is in this country where it's a certain expected time of year mm -hmm. it was just throughout the year yeah. do you know what I mean so That's I can imagine something. being on an island trying to take something like as a, re a religion seriously and your mm -hmm. feet feel like fucking mm -hmm. wooden blocks well it was very rainy the whole time I was there so yeah, it's slippy, it's, you know, you got wet, cold feet, no shoes and socks. And yeah. Do you reckon you'll go back? I think I would, yeah. 
do you reckon it'll be like, a, do you feel the sense of, right, I'm going to go back next year? And, or do you feel like, no, it's like um, when you have a certain experience, you feel like, no, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see myself doing it again, but in a, in a few years. Honestly, I've not even put a timeline on it. I feel like the way it called me this time, that's what's going to happen. It'll just be a knowing. Because yeah. I found um, <laughs> it was a crazy thing that like, I became a celebrity on the island while I was there because of the fact no one could get their head round that I wasn't Catholic, I wasn't brought up in religion, I wasn't from Ireland, all these different factors, yet I've come from Manchester on a plane, on buses, on my own, not knowing what to expect, going yeah, into yeah. a religious activity that I know nothing about. They were like, you're my inspiration, so you are. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you've given me the reason to re-find my faith. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. it was like, I was seeing like this magic unfold between the But how the mint's that? Because they're making. saying that to you, but you're there almost getting your exchange and exactly. your kind of, that's, that's quite Exactly, like they were teaching sweet. me so much and showing me community and so much loving. In all honesty, one thing that I massively found there as someone who is a performer and does feel this expectation of image and how you come across and you know being on stage performing, it was how everyone loved me for me. You know, I didn't have any makeup on, my hair was absolutely awful the whole time I was there, I wore the same clothes for three days, all these different things, I had nothing to offer anyone and yet the amount of love that I was yeah. shown like in every interaction just made me feel so like how could I not love myself yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. something that I was struggling on like you say with the mental health and stuff it's it's like we have this false image of ourselves and that just totally cut through that bullshit for me. They're, um, in terms of the Irish, they're salt of the earth. I, I, I mean, yeah. I only had a, cu- a couple of bad experiences living over there mm-hmm. as, a, as a, an, an English person, but it's like to, to generalise the Irish for those bad experiences I had would be, it's not, it's not fair at all. Overall, mm-hmm. I, I caught, I, that's why I love living up north in, in England. I've lived all over mm-hmm. and I, the salt of the earth people are, are, are northerner, northerners um, and Irish, you know. And Turkish. I'll just throw that in. Turkish. Yeah, I find there's a big similarity between how people in Turkey are in the hearts right. like they are in Ireland. Do you go to Turkey much? Have you, yeah, you I, w- I work on a lot of youth projects in Turkey. Because we, I love Ola Denise. We were That's where it. I do it. Oh, yeah. no, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, my friend owns like a, a training centre and hotel there. Right. So we go and we do like youth projects on all different no, topics. No, it's a beautiful place. And I also get to enjoy Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah like work holiday. Too. That's meant that. Mm-hmm. What, um, in terms of music then, because I know you, you, you do like uh, sort of covers band now don't mm-hmm. you is, it, mm-hmm. is that kind of by yourself would you see that like is, it, is that a band collect- collectively that you're doing that's currently so i've i've always got different plates spinning with especially with music um so i'm still working solo i'm still working on my own ep or album i'm not sure what it's going to be yet i'm not trying to judge it it's just going to shape up whatever be However, will be that's it i've even got a lyric saying that in one of my songs so yeah um but at the same time i've now formed well not formed but i'm taking part in a duo we have a guitarist who he does sing oh, as well. And the, he the, um, we, uh, the, that's the video I watched the other night. The, yeah, Velvet Rose. With the, uh, you're doing it in like a, well, I'm trying to speak English here, with the <laughs> fairy lights, and it's like blue fairy lights, so it's kind of like a studio live session. Yeah, like a live lounge type. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. who's that you're doing that with, sorry? But he's called Matt Eastwood, Matthew Eastwood. Right. Um, so he plays guitar, he writes songs, he also <laughs> sings. Um, and it's just really working. We've both got the same mindset and vision and both love music and want to be able to make more of a living from doing what we love um which is excellent for both of us and at the same time it's given me more confidence with my own music and you know being able to push things differently um but i'm always working with other artists as well as you probably already know like especially a hip-hop drum and bass yeah house. are you going to be doing anything with lance or chris then do you reckon i imagine so there's well there's been some things already kind of Created or spoken of. I know you. I know you did the. Um, you did a. Uh, what's the word? You did because um, uh, what video was it? Was it Lance? Yeah, one of Lance's. Um, it's hard to keep up with, especially with them two. The one where you had you. Uh, uh, yeah, because you have a, like a, an appearance in it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I helped them out with that. Just as like obviously with the visual, they needed a female for the visual. I was available, so I said, of course I'll help you. Um, but on the music side of things, we've been in talks S- ever since the mental health event where we all got a lot closer, to be honest. We've been saying, we need to do this, we need to get in studio. Um, so me and Reminis, Remy, we've kind of already got something underway. They just need to finalise it. 
and like anything with creatives, any creative person will know. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah, all these yeah, ideas, yeah, 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 yeah. but you know, and it's always love between you. But life happens, and trying yeah. to get everyone together at the same time and stay focused when we have so many different projects ourselves. Yeah, it's yeah. it's one of them things that will happen at the That's right. That's why time. I think the mental health night was such. It was like one of those best night out that wasn't planned yes. kind of things. That's Definitely. how I look at that night out. It was just like, and to be honest with you. I'm going to say it because I feel like if I put it out there, it'll put pressure on me. But mm-hmm. one of the things I'd like to potentially do next year, a few things I want to do. One thing is I'd like to actually try and do what Kenny did and mm-hmm. just do create a night because I feel yeah. like some, some same kind of idea, a load of mates. Cause I've, I've got, you know, longer than my arm, a list of like mates that are musicians. And I just, there's a few little quirks I'd like to do, but I just love the idea of a load of us just meeting up. Mm-hmm. And even if it's raising four or 500 quid. It's yeah. just, it's four or five hundred quid. Mate, like, you know. I will back you all the way. And do you know what? Oh. I think, now obviously, there's the fundraising aspects of it, but what I took from the night that Kenny put on with the Mind Charity, like, yes, that side, like, we managed to raise money. That's incredible. But, and I know you saw this yourself because I'm sure we've had this conversation. For me, what really touched my heart was how everyone in that room, whether they was one of the artists or they came to watch, everyone came together. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. if you was feeling shit that day, there's no way you left feeling no, shit. No, yeah, we yeah. actually did the work and helped improve mental health in that room. Yeah, and yeah. I strongly believe that. I think music's one of the most powerful ways to do that, to bring people together, yeah, yeah, reconnect, yeah. re-energize, forget your shit for a few hours. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, That's why I think kind of people still live for, for concerts, you know, it's mm-hmm. that kind of a couple of hours escapism. Mm-hmm. Especially when I, do you know, um, I'm mad into it at the moment, mm-hmm. Post Malone. Okay. I'm so gutted that, because he did a tour recently, and I just, you know, when you just, you know, when you've just missed that train, because mm-hmm. I've really got into him recently, but he's, uh, you know, I've, I've pretty much, I've, I feel like I have seen him live, you know, the mm-hmm. amount of stuff you can watch on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I've been really kind of like sort of motivated recently, and I think mm-hmm. like next year I would like to try and do something along those lines, because mm-hmm. I just think it will be, yeah, I just think it'd be a load of fun, and it's mm-hmm. just you know. And obviously, uh, the thing is with me, I can cover, I can make a load of press about it, mm-hmm. I can film it, and 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 in terms of charity, I don't know if it would, I don't know if it sound mad, mm-hmm. but even I, I don't know if I would either do mental health. I even love to do something for Dogs Trust because they've been nice. amazing to to me and Lizzie with Loki and stuff. Amazing. So, but that might sound a bit mad that we're all doing like a mad skanking out sort of like you know night out, but it's just in the name of Dogs Trust. But it's been mm-hmm. mad, is it really? Doesn't matter. The main thing is the intention behind it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What mm-hmm. have you got coming up then in terms of to look out for? To look out for? Mm, nothing that I can speak too much about on solo music just yet because everything's still in the pipeline. Um, I did release something on Halloween, a song called No Fear. Right. So, especially on Halloween, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of dark forces at bay and it was just a case of, no, I've got no fear, bringing more good vibes on a day that apparently there can be more kind of, you know, if you believe in black magic or whatever, yeah, yeah. people say that there's more activity on that day. So it's like, I'm going to counteract that with a load of light, mate. There you go, Bob's your uncle. Um, so yeah, that got released then. Other than that, I'm just working, like I say, behind the scenes. I've realised in the last few years, sometimes it's just better to say nothing at all. Keep your head down, keep your moves to yourself. And then obviously... And stuff will just appear. Everything comes out at the right time and... Because I think sometimes if you announce things too soon, people aren't always supportive. There are people who could be jealous or, you know, just don't have the best wishes for you. Yeah. And they start wishing you bad. And it's just one of them. I don't want to risk anything. I just want to work on what I'm doing, keep everything to myself. I think I've just, I've mellowed a lot, you know, I've matured recently to the point where I'm like, everything in my life right now it's because it's dear to my heart. Like, I'm not worried about what people think anymore, whether it's about myself, my music what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. I'm just like, if it resonates with me and it means something to you, mate, I'm going to put energy there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that's how you vote for things, isn't it? Not in a political way, but I guess it is, but in a sense of what's important in your life, you vote for it by giving it your focus. So I'm just like, I'll keep doing that. And then when the time's right, these fruitions will be available and you know, I'll announce it like, oh, I've got this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I say, I don't really know where it's going right now, but there's a lot of creativity in the air is all I'll say. With the, um, one thing I want to close on then is with the, because uh, you mentioned about like Reiki and how long have you been doing mm-hmm. that for? Because like with um, Loki and the, mm-hmm. obviously the, the because I have to, I want to say this right. Have you, have you heard of this before? So masturbatory muscle myositis. It sounds familiar, but I don't think I've heard of that exact 
So it's because I've, I've it's, a, it's a tongue twister. So mm -hmm. it's basically, uh, it's a common autoimmune condition in dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and me and Michelle briefly touched on this earlier, but basically mm -hmm. we first saw it was where he had a, his jaw locked. Because mm -hmm. it, it basically affects the muscles in the jaw. Mm -hmm. And then it does a, uh, one side effect. It like we, you, you, you'd think he got his um, eye stung by a bumblebee. His oh, eye went like that, and we just assumed that's what it was. But this one of the things from this could have triggered it, I guess. Yeah. Well, there, there's a few. No, no. In terms of this, it, this is just one. It actually, honestly, looks like a bee, but it 100 percent isn't. It's basically a lot of the immune system that's kind of failing. But we're obviously on the steroids, pregnostone, pregnostone. I don't know if you heard it. So if, um, oh. I'm crap words. But basically, it's a very, very strong steroid. Mm -hmm. um, there's the whole people have been talking about CBD and, and stuff yeah. and you do that for dogs, but you're not meant to do it whilst he's on um, a, a case of steroids. Okay. But when you mentioned Reiki, it's mad because I, mm -hmm. the best way of explaining that, even though I don't fully um, go along, uh, what's, I'm trying to, even though I'm not maybe uh, an activist with it or I sort mm -hmm. of like promote it or anything, I'm very, very aware um, and respectful that there is a chance. Well, no, no. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I'm yeah, kind of possible. open minded yeah, to it. Because I've and seen it. There's always going to be a little bit of skeptic in all of us. Do you know what I mean? It's something that you can't physically see. Yeah. Whereas, you know, someone gives you antibiotics, you've got the tablets physically. Yeah, in the your placebo hand, of, yeah, yeah. Whether it's placebo or you believe that it's actually doing something with the ingredients, like you've got something physical there that you can put into your body and you believe that that's going to have an effect. Whereas with holistic therapies, especially Reiki, there's not really something that you're given that you can see. It's obviously, it's just a practice that some people resonate with, some people don't resonate with, depending on the beliefs and where they're at in their own journey. Um, but one thing I've found with any holistic therapy that I've trained in, and obviously holistic's just something that isn't your normal medical route of doctors and clinics and prescriptions, mm. it's more natural things. It's looking at the whole body. You know, it's the thoughts, the emotions, the life experience, that thing that happened to you when you was that old and that's triggered something. And it's basically looking at you as a whole rather than this is the symptom that you've got now. Um, because anything could be triggering that symptom. It doesn't necessarily mean that the first thing we need to do is fix the sore elbow. It's like, okay, something's causing your elbow to, yeah, to hurt. Yeah. Um, and what I found is no matter what therapy that you choose to either train in or have given to you as a session by a therapist, the most important thing is that you're relaxed. That's what a lot of it is, like the actual start of any session is getting you so relaxed that your body is in a, a state where your body starts healing itself, your mind starts healing itself. Because as I mentioned earlier, like what we need, it's already in us, do you know what I mean? It's like a blueprint. We already know how to fix ourselves, what we need to eat to feel better, what we need to do daily to feel good or to get to that point that we want to get to. Mm. But that is the main thing that I've found. So like, of course, Reiki for a dog would be an amazing idea because the thing is you want to keep him as relaxed as possible, especially the nature that you mentioned where the muscles are tensing. It's locking, that, that stress, like the first thing that a human does when we get stressed, we hold it in our jaw. You clench your jaw. That's why people grind the teeth in their sleep because they're so highly sprung from stress or certain events happening mm -hmm. that you know, it's in the muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So something like that, whatever it is, whether it's the CBD, again, a relaxant, or some kind of essential oils, even just burning in the house, like lavender or frankincense around him to just bring him down. Because, I mean, obviously I don't know Loki's history and anything like that, but maybe there's just something that's happened when he was a pup or something, or he's experienced something that stressed him out and now he's a little bit nervous or yeah, yeah. it could be anything I wouldn't like to say, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, no, it's just, that's, the, but that's why it's been very, very handy having like the Facebook group because it's not about, you can be in a realm of like, you might read something, like loads of different synopsis mm -hmm. and different people's interpretations. You might get lost in that and then you might think, oh my God, this is Loki got that. What I actually like about it is just it's a very kind of communal um, sense of everyone's in the mm -hmm. same boat. Yeah, you're not alone. And you know, it's like, you know, so that's been really, 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 mm -hmm. really nice and supportive, especially for me and Liz, because it's, especially because it, we've never heard of it before, you know what I mean? And you're almost, learn, it's like, well, I, can, I can only relate where the parent's kid got sick yeah. and you've got to learn everything about that illness. And Definitely try and do the best you can to, to, to manage it. I mean, you know yourself, anything, even like you said, the mental health stuff, you want to be aware of it. You want to yeah. know what's happening so that you know what you're up against, what to expect and how to better manage it and yeah. you know, hopefully treat it completely. Exactly, so I, yeah, I yeah. definitely get that, I agree with that. 
Cool. I've loved doing this. This has been really, really nice. Thanks cool. Home, no, Josh. no, no. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> should we? We're gonna go and get a bite to eat. Do you want to cool. come with? Yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. Should we go and get a bite? Bite to eat. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's a wrap. Nice one, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>